For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. What about the hyper-variable regions in the genome where they find more than 400 alleles? Can this all be genetic diversity explained by the biblical time frame? Uh, yeah, in fact, usually when they're talking about that, they're talking about the HLA alleles, which are part of the immune system. Hmm. Our immune system is designed to rearrange DNA to make new antibodies. Now, those aren't necessarily inherited, but it's a highly adaptable portion of the genome. And look, we've had 6,000 years. There's 7 billion people in this world. If you take everyone's family tree and go back in time, we have all these independent branches in the family tree where lots of mutation can happen. So take a gene, you know, if a gene's, let's say, pick a number, 10,000 letters long. There's 10,000 places for a mutation to happen. If one letter change in one place makes a new allele, another letter change in another place makes another allele. It's not a big deal. Of course, there's allelic diversity. And usually when they say there's all this diversity, they don't tell you what the frequency of these alleles is. Most of these things are incredible incredibly infrequent. They're extremely rare. They're a brand new mutation that happened in Tajikistan or in Patagonia or in you know, Sweden. And it's only one family or in one tribe or in one country or one region. So most of these things are vanishingly rare to the point where you're like, okay, whatever, it's a new mutation. Why is that a big deal when there's 7 billion people? In fact, it's kind of shocking there's so little diversity amongst us. In fact, we have probably one-fifth to one-tenth the di genetic diversity of chimpanzees. That's a good a point. A lot, lot fewer chimpanzees in the world.